Good day, great tens. Welcome to week three. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at still factorizing, but we're going to be looking at the sum and difference of two cubes. So let's start this nice little video on the sum of two cubes. Factor 27x to the sixth plus 125. So this is a pretty interesting problem. And frankly, the only way to do this is if you recognize it as a special form. And what I want to do is kind of show you the special form right first, and then we can kind of pattern match. So the special form is, if I were to take, and this is really just something you need to know, and you know, I, I'd argue whether you really need to know this, but actually to do this problem, it's something you just need to know. And that's if you have a squared minus ab plus b squared, and you multiply that times a plus b, let's think about what we're going to get. So we're going to take a product right here. We're multiplying. So let's do, do some algebraic multiplication. So let's multiply b times b squared is b to the third. b times negative negative AB is negative AB squared. B times A squared is A squared B. Now let's multiply this top term times A. A times B squared is AB squared. A times negative AB is negative A squared B. And then A times A squared is A to the third. And then we just have to add up all of the terms. We have a negative a squared b, or we have a positive a squared b and a negative a squared b. So these guys cancel out. We have a negative a b squared and a positive a b squared. These guys cancel out. So all we're left with is an a to the third here, an a to the third, and then plus, plus this b to the third, plus this b to the third. Or another way to think about it, if someone gives you a to the third plus b to the third, this can be factored into these two expressions. That can be factored into a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So this is essentially the special form. If you have a sum of cubes, it can be factored out as the sum of the, the cube roots plus, or the, the sum of the cube roots times this expression right here. And we just showed that it works. So let's see if we have that special form here. Well, 27 is definitely the cube of 3. 3 to the third power is 27. x to the sixth is also the cube of x squared. If you raise x to the sixth to the 1 third power, you get x squared. So this first term right over here can be rewritten as 3x squared to the third power. And the second term right here, that's 5 to the third power. So plus 5 to the third power. And just, this might be a little bit confusing for you, so just let's it never hurts to review. Let's multiply 3x squared times 3x squared times 3x squared. That is literally equal to 3 times 3 times 3 times x squared times x squared times x squared. That's this part right here is 27. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth times x squared is x to the sixth. Or you could just raise both of these to the third power. 3 to the third is 27. x squared to the third power. You take an exponent to an exponent, and you're going to take the product of the exponent. So it'll be x to the two times three, or x to the sixth power. So now we know that we have this pattern. So we can just use this. We have the sum of cubes. So just by using this pattern right over here, that means that we can factor it as this is going to be equal to 3x squared. That's our a. Let me make it clear. This right here is our a. This right here is our b. So it's going to be a plus b. So it's going to be 3x squared plus b plus 5 times a squared, a squared. Let me do this in a new color. So 3x squared squared. Let's write, think about that for a second. 3x squared squared. Well, that's going to be 9x to the fourth. So it's going to be times 9x to the fourth minus the product of these two things. So minus the product of 5 and 3x squared. So minus 15x squared. And then finally, plus b squared. b is 5. So it's going to be 5 squared, so plus 25. When I say b is, the, this is b, not the whole 5 to the third. And when I say a, just this part is a. And we're done. And we could, I won't explain it in detail in this video, but this right here, if we're thinking about real numbers, we can't actually factor this anymore. So we are done factoring this. And remember, this is really just a very, very, very uh, special case of being rec able to recognize the sum, the sum of cubes. Right, 
so the video showed us very nicely that the sum of cubes basically is given by a pattern and we're just going to now use that to help us do this question. So what they said was that basically if you had a cubed plus b cubed, do you agree that it became a plus b and then it was a squared minus ab plus b squared? Okay, so now let's do this question. Now, if you look at this question straight off, do you see that we've got 2 and 16? And 2 is not a perfect cube and neither is 16. But do you see that I could take out, wait for it, a common factor? Please don't think that just because you're seeing a perfect cube here with the x cubed and the y cubed there, y to the ninth, that you can't first think about common factors. So we're going to take out a common factor of 2 and then you're left with x cubed plus 8y to the ninth. And then you can get excited because then you can see that x cubed is just the same as a cubed and 8y to the ninth is also a perfect cube. So in this case if we had to follow his example a would be x and b in this case would be the cube root of that. The cube root of 8 is 2 and the cube root of y to the ninth is 3. So it's y to the 3. And the reason we see the cube root is because what are we doing? We're dividing by 3 when we come to our exponents. So let we, we could then write this out in this format. So it would be 2 x plus 2y cubed and then it's going to be a squared so that's going to be x squared minus AB which is going to be X times by 2Y cubed okay and then plus to B squared so 2 squared is 4 and Y squared is going to be Y to the 6 okay so now let's just get sort this out this middle term so to become 2 X plus 2Y cubed and then it's X squared minus 2xy cubed plus 4y to the 6. So please remember that if there is a plus, if it's a sum of sum of two cubes, then you have a plus b and then you have a squared minus ab plus b squared. And unfortunately this is just something that you are going to have to learn. You are going to, like the gentleman in the video said, you are going to have to just learn this. Right, now let's look at the difference of two cubes. And again, I just have to get my little arrow going. Factor 40c to the third minus 5d to the third. So there doesn't look to be anything obvious just yet. 40 doesn't look like a perfect cube to me, and neither does 5. But at least both of these terms are divisible by 5. So let's factor out a 5. So this is equal to 5 times, if you factor out a 5 out of here, 40 divided by 5 is 8, c to the third. You factor out a 5 here, minus d to the third. Now it looks a little bit more interesting because 8c to the third is a perfect cube. 8 is a perfect cube, and c to the third is clearly a perfect cube. So this is a perfect cube, and so is d to the third. It's d to the third power. Now, once again, this is a special case. This is a special case, and I'll tell you the special case right from the get-go. It's a to the third, a to the third minus b to the third, I'm just writing it in the general form, is equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus plus b squared. And just so you don't get it confused, the other pattern we know is the sum of cubes. Let me do that in a different color. The sum of cubes is a to the third plus b to the third, and that factors out to a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared. So when you have a negative sign here, this is a negative, this is a positive. When you have a positive sign here, this is a positive, and that is a negative. And we can multiply this out. We can multiply this out if you don't believe me. You have a squared plus a b plus b squared times a to the third, sorry, times a, a minus b. Let's multiply it out. So first you have the negative b times all of this business up here. So let's multiply the negative b times all of that. So we get negative b to the third minus a b squared. 
and then negative b a or let me write it this way negative a is squared b so i just multiplied negative b times all of that stuff and i'll multiply a times all of that stuff so a times b squared so a b squared a times a b is a squared b and then a times a squared is a to the third when you add them all together these guys cancel out these guys cancel out and you're just left with an a to the third over here minus uh, b to the third. So hopefully you now see that this does work out, and this is a very special case. Difference of uh, cubes. So we can just do pattern matching here. This 8c to the third, that is the same thing as 2c to the third power, and then d to the third is clearly, this, well that's just clearly d, that's clearly d to the third power. So let's just factor this out. So this is going to be equal to, let's put this 5 out front, I'll put brackets here, so we can view these brackets as being right over here. And then this is going to be A minus B. A here is 2C, so it's 2C minus B. In, our, in this, when we pattern match, the B here is D. Here's B to the third, here we have D to the third. So that over here is going to be D. That is going to be D times A squared. A, let me write it down here, A in our example, a is equal to 2c, and in our pattern, b is equal to d. So if we have a squared, that's 2c squared, or that's 4c squared, or 2 squared times c squared, either way, minus a times b, so minus a times b, minus 2cd, and then plus b squared, so plus, plus d is squared. And actually, I'm forgetting a parentheses over here. And we're done. And we know that we can get rid of those brackets. This is the exact same thing as 5 times 2c minus d times 4c squared minus 2cd plus d squared. And you can attempt to factor this again, but I'll, we won't do it in this problem. And it's actually uh, not a trivial thing to do. And I'll let you leave you there. We have factored this as a difference of cubes. Right. <coughs> so now we saw in that video that there was a different pattern that we could use. Um, so when it becomes a difference of two squares. So let's have a look at this. The actual pattern now is a cubed minus b cubed is going to be again a minus b so it's the same and then it's a squared plus a b plus b squared it's a squared plus a b plus b squared so if you understand that you can actually for me just go back a little bit do you see that with a plus b so that if there was a plus in the middle of the two then it becomes a plus b and then this sign here is a minus whereas now we've got a cubed minus b cubed we now have a minus b and then that is a plus so basically your first bracket always takes on the sign of whatever the different the number is I mean the sign is between the two cubes and then the middle term here is the opposite of whatever that sign is so now let's do an example so if we have a look at this, we can immediately see that that's a cubed and this is b cubed. So then we need to check the numbers. And 27 happens to be 3 cubed. So that works for us. So in this case, if we had to do this, this here, a, would be 3a. Okay, so 4a cubed, the a is 3a. And then b cubed, yes, we know that is a perfect cube, but what is 64? Well, 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. So in this case, in this case, your b happens to be 4b. Okay, so now then we can just follow the pattern, we can follow the rule, which says basically that this is going to become a minus b, which is going to be 3a minus 4b right then it becomes a squared which is this squared so it becomes 9a squared right plus note the sign change plus and then it's a times b a times b 3 times 4 is 12 so it's 12ab and then plus b squared which becomes plus b squared which is 16 
squared. So grade 10, you can see that the sum and difference of two cubes is actually really easy. You firstly just need to recognize that you've got two cubes. And then secondly, you need to just learn the rules. So please make sure you do that and then practice, practice, practice and do the assessment at the end of the section. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.